we're going to do something here that that uh, is a little bit different. Um, if you remember the previous version when we flow tested the head, I'm going to write the a few of the numbers up on the board. I am going to do a a, a page dedicated to this on my website that's got the flow sheet numbers uh, off of uh, Promax's flow bench. I took the heads and carried them to two more independent places and tested them. And uh, it was kind of shocking to see the difference in numbers, which I think a lot of it's calibration of the benches. But um, regardless, the outcome was when, when me and Jason flowed the heads, this is one i have done, and Jason had a set of heads down there. Uh, I don't know who did them or, or who had flowed them or who had done the port work on them, but <clears throat> they were 250 thousandths raised runner where this right here was stock location, or a set like these were stock location. And uh, the funny thing is, is the CC volume was almost identical between the two. So there's a message there. Uh, they were 236 and, and 237 within one cc, and his head had the 250 raised runner. Okay, so, and one other difference, his head had the 2100 valve, mine had 2080. So he pretty much had two distinct advantages over me, but surprisingly enough, the CFM wasn't that much difference. My head's stopped location with a 2080 valve come in at 294 CFM at 28 inches. His head's flowed 306 CFM at 28 inches. Now, I might add something. I did not witness his head being flowed. There was a flow sheet there. So I cannot say that I saw it being flowed on the bench at the same time as mine, but I, you know, I trust Jason. I'm sure he wouldn't <coughs> lie to me. Just hand me a piece of paper and tell me something. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this head out to 2100 intake and 160 exhaust. <coughs> so it's already at 208. I'm going to get you in here a little close and let's go over it. Okay. I was just going to show you real quick. I get emails and I try to incorporate them into my videos for you DIY guys, you know, the best that I can. So I know a lot of y'all are probably way above some of this and, you know, I get some comments, don't, you know, take so long, don't preach, all that. There's a lot of people out there that don't know this stuff and I was just going to try to show people who want to attempt to try to do it themselves to show them how. Alright. That being said, let's go over something. This is the 2100 valve, what I always do. I take the stone and lay it on top of the valve and see how close it is. On the 60, it can be just a little bit bigger than the valve and that's going to be more than enough. Now the 30, you can play games with this, unshrouding. I'll have two different 30s I use. One's close to the size, and I might have one 30 or 40 or even 50 thousandths bigger to get a little wider. Then, of course, your 45. Now just to make sure I'm in the right place as far as checking to see if I can enlarge the valve, typically I take a pair of finders, and I go in there and lay on the valve, see about where the seat's going to be. And then I come over here to the head, see if I can get you down on top of it a little bit. And then I'll take and lay on the head. Now I can tell you this, I'm going to have just a little bit of seat overhang. So it would be safe to say 2-100 is all you got. I, you know, it was a hard thing, but... I was after CFM, I've done a tremendous amount of work, which we'll take a look at the, the finished stuff, the, the tubes. Also notice I had to drill this for steam holes. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to show you. This is pretty interesting. I've seen this for years on aftermarket heads. When you're drilling steam holes in here, on the aftermarket heads, they're a lot thicker. This one here didn't go through. Now I had a three inch drill bit 
and it went all the way through and still has not broken through. Now, all the rest of them on the head work, you know, just fine. Went through. Uh, this one here, th these are the hardest. These up here usually go through, and they're a bigger diameter, and of course, these are smaller. But this one took almost the length of my three inch drill bit, but it broke through. That one broke through, but this one here did not. And uh, on the time frame I had, I didn't have time to get a longer drill bit. I found one at drillbit.com or a couple of other ones. It's either a four or five inch. I've ordered one, but these heads were supposed to ship out tonight. They're going to leave in the morning because I wanted to go through a couple of things. But anyway, uh, I just tell my customer the size bit that I use and get one about an inch longer. Since it's already drilled all the way through, I, I cannot tell you. I've actually had some cast iron dart heads, and uh, there's been a couple of other Brodex heads that, I mean, I had a four-inch bit and couldn't get it to go through. So in that case, there's nothing you can do. Keep in mind, it's at an angle like this where that one right there is straight. But anyway, just wanted to tell you, if you don't bust through, don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Sometimes it just won't. But with the ends both doing it and that one, I don't think I'm going to have too much of trouble. All right, now, anyway, we go over here. And like I said, I checked it. I've got just a little bit of overhang in the seat, just enough where I'm going to barely get away with it. So it would be safe to say 2100 is absolutely max race limit on this. Um, I prefer the 208, really, but I was after the numbers with this head, which uh, the final CFM, and this is with it in a stock location. And, um, the valve job, of course, was done with the Surty machine at, um, at uh, Pro Max. I put a seat run out dial on it uh, just to check, and, you know, I'll always tell y'all the truth. I was coming up with about six to eight thousandths on most of these so there was a couple of them is around three or four it's just mass production i mean you know there it, it don't matter if it's dark brodex elder brock or whoever the valve jobs ain't you know they're just not as good as they can be so like i said uh, the worst one on this though was a uh, seven thousandths that's right seven thousandths and it was on the exhaust. The intakes were a little better. They were coming in between three and four. So it's a lot better than a lot of them are, but still. Okay, so anyway, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I've covered it before. I'll take my 60 degree stone. Okay. Go ahead and uh, put my pilot in. And I'm going to use the 60. I ain't got to dig much because remember, this is already 2080. So it ain't going to come up much, but what it is going to do is give me a cool radius. This ain't about getting a bigger valve for maximum airflow. It's about enlarging the seat and coming up where I will be able to form a better radius and angle to turn the air to get it into the bore. I mean, what would 20,000 diameter airflow actually do? Probably not too much. But it's the seat work that you do, which my valve jobs I have... This is going to be a four angle cut deal, but I will make it where it can make the 90 degree turn and dump the air better into the bore, mainly on the intake, by using the 2100 valve. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and ready to set this up, get the valve job done, and we're going to come take a look at the bowls as soon as I get through and how they lined up. About when you get in your five, six thousand side of rounds, uh, I keep my pilots new and I replace my stone holders uh, once a year so it's tight now look how thick my blue line is right here now look what happens when I turn it up okay there ain't no blue line so that means that I'm getting concentric and round right here and then look here ma'am Look how thick that is. That's about a 30 or 40 thousandths line. Now using the 60 and a 30 degree going back and forth is going to straighten that out and get it back in line and make it concentric. Right now I see flat out. I can, I've done so much of it that I can look at the depth of the line and the contact point and I can usually tell how much that it's out around. So I mean I, as soon as I saw that it made perfectly sense. 
that it was out around like that. All right, anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull them in and make that line disappear. I'll have to 60 and 30 it a couple of times to get the roundness back 